This video will show you how to measure the internal resistance of a cell. The circuit diagram we're going to use is this one here. We've got our source of electromotive force, our EMF, here, which is just going to be one simple single dry cell, 1.5 cell. This is going to model our internal resistance. We're actually kind of um, faking it a little bit here and using an external resistance resistor to model our internal resistance. And this is our variable resistance. This we're going to call our load resistance R, capital R. Here's where we're going to measure the current in the circuit, the ammeter and the voltmeter here. We're basically going to vary the variable resistor and take readings of I and V. It's a pretty simple method, but it's going to require some good math skills, including applying this equation here. This equation defines EMF. It says the EMF is equal to the current times the load resistance plus the current times the internal resistance. So basically, the EMF is the energy given to the charge. And as the charge flows through the circuit, some dissipates through the load resistance, some of the energy dissipates through the load resistance, and some through the internal resistance. So if we actually just apply Ohm's law here, we replace the current times the load resistance with V. We can then rearrange this equation to give us an equation that looks something like this. V equals minus R I plus the EMF. And that should look something like an equation you've studied before in maths, an equation for straight lines. That's the analysis that we're going to have to be doing at the end of this. The variable resistor is just like the piece of wire that we had on the ruler in the previous experiment. It's just it's coiled around it so it's a bit more compact. It is the same principle as a standard potentiometer. And this one goes from 0 ohms all the way to 135 ohms. I'm not too worried about the safety here because the currents are going to be so small so the overall power of the circuit is not going to be very large at all. Also, there is going to be a heating effect due to the current, but both the fixed resistor we're using to model the internal resistance and the variable, re variable resistor are designed so that they don't heat up very much for very low currents. So their resistance shouldn't be changed much by that heating effect. I simply read off the current and the voltage and I input them into my table. Remembering this is on the milliamp scale. This is just straight volts. I'm going to vary each time, not worrying too much about what my numbers are, or indeed what order I do this in, because we're just going to plot them on a continuous scale in any case. probably not going to bother repeating this experiment. I'm just going to get more readings so that I have a more refined curve or straight line, whatever the set of results I get out. And again, I'm going to record whatever the highest number is I see as or if my readings fluctuate really matter if you record the highest one or the lowest one or if you just try and judge kind of in the middle of a fluctuating reading as long as you do the same thing for all of your readings at this point you can see my meter is at its maximum reading or beyond its maximum reading so I need to change the sensitivity I've still got the same number of significant figures uh, three significant figures, but now I've got room for that extra digit that it was obviously needing. We can do two quick things with our multimeters to check how accurate our results are going to be. You can see this is just on the ohm meter setting, and I'm just measuring the resistance of the, um, the internal resistance with the ohm meter, and it's 21.7, so that's the manufacturer rates that uh, resistance at 22 ohms. And we can also 
check the EMF of the cell. This is a 1.5, or accurately, we've got 1.54 volts. This EMF is when there's no power being drawn, so there's no other components in the circuit apart from this very high resistance multimeter. So this should be the same values we get from our graph of the actual EMF of the cell. Here are the results then. There's the voltages and the currents. And this is the graph V on the y-axis and I on the x-axis. Hopefully you remember the equation that we reached, which was V is equal to minus I plus E. Uh, well, I said that's similar to an equation for a straight line graph, which is Y equals MX plus C. Let's have a little think about that. That means that minus R is the same as M, is the gradient, and the y-intercept is the EMF. Okay, well, let's see if we can find those in on our graph then. Well, luckily um, for us, Excel will actually work out an equation for the graph without having to take any measurements. What we're saying is that minus 0 0.0212 is minus r, so r is 0 0.0212 and we're saying that the y-intercept plus 1.43 is the EMF. Not bad compared to our results that we measured there. Oh, but hang on a minute, we're way off here. This should be more like 22. Well, I hope you figured out my deliberate error was that it's in milliamps this so therefore, we have not done our conversion here. You can do that with a bit of maths, but quite simply, it's a factor of 10 to the uh, 3 that we've got to go through. But what I've just done is just do the tables again, converted into amps there. Now our equation We have plus 4, that hasn't changed, that's the EMF, minus 21.1, so little r is 21.2, sorry, ohms, not bad, I measured 21.7 with the ohm meter, and the EMF came out at 1.54 volts. Sorry, no, it didn't. It came out at 1.43, and what I measured with the voltmeter was 1.54. Well, I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute, I'm still not satisfied with this. I noticed that the results were in kind of two groups. Something funny has happened here, differently to here. And I don't know if you remember on the video, there was a point at which I had to switch the sensitivity. So I figured that must be the reason for this. Well, the, you know, the the meter shouldn't be any less accurate. It was still precise enough. Both of them was precise enough to be lying along this line. But, uh, well, okay, something's gone wrong here. So what I did was I split my two sets of results up. Let me just show you that. Again, these are in amps now. So I'm in SI units, so I didn't no, do not need to worry about conversions. And wow, something even stranger has happened over here. Now I've got, well, about double what I should have for my internal resistance. So I'm pretty confident that these results are not as accurate as these ones over here. And look at these ones. Yep, I measured 20. 1.7, this is 22.8, so okay, not as good as the whole thing combined, but still better. And the actual EMF now, 1.52, and I measured 1.54, so this is pretty good. What I would probably do now, if I was to do this uh, experiment or any further work on this experiment, I'd probably actually go through the whole thing with that lower sensitivity, and hopefully I'd get a much nicer, more refined straight line. Well, thank you very much for listening. I hope that helped. 
if it helped then tell your friends and don't forget to subscribe like and share